Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to check the refrigerant charge when it's cold outside. So today it's colder than 70 degrees outside, and I'm going to show you a technique in order to check the refrigerant charge when it's below 70 degrees and above 37 degrees. So typically we check the refrigerant charge on an air conditioner or heat pump when it's above 70 outside and above 70 degrees Fahrenheit inside the building. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the airflow out of the top of this thing in order to replicate a day when it's when it's hotter outside. So this can only be done with systems that have a thermostatic expansion valve as the metering device for cooling mode. So this will be right in front of the indoor coil. What we're going to do is we're going to mount a charging jacket on the top of this outdoor unit around right around the top. And what it's going to do is it's going to have an outlet of about that much airflow coming out of it. And we're going to restrict that airflow size um, and while we're, while we're monitoring the saturated state on the high side. So we want to try to get the saturated state to be right around 90 to 105 degrees for, for the high side. So this one has a curved top on it, so we can't just put a piece of plywood on here. We're going to have to mount the charging jacket on because if we put a pl piece of plywood on here and covered the whole top, we're still going to have too much airflow coming out of the sides. If you had a flat top, then you could put a piece of plywood on here and move it in order to adjust the saturated state. Uh, another thing that you want to make sure to not do, you don't want to put a piece of plywood and covering the fins like this. And that's because you're going to end up covering over the saturated state of the refrigerant inside each of these tubes, and that's going to foul that up. So we just want to make sure that we're uniformly, uniformly, restricting the airflow coming out of the top and that will make sure that the airflow is the same on all the coils surrounding the unit. So if you have a flat top like this one you can put a piece of plywood on and then just put a weight on top of it in order to hold this in place and then you can adjust the amount of air coming out of the top of the outdoor unit. Uh, but today it's 49 degrees outside and we're working with a, a grill right here that is curved from the top so we're going to go ahead and put our charging jacket on. So now that we have this on the top we want to make sure that it's pulled nice and tight along the perimeter and you're going to put these bungee cords on somewhere where it's, it's very close to the very top at right here just like this. And as you see over here I've already closed the hole off pretty small so we can have it a little bit bigger if we wanted to but I'm just going to start off small and then we'll adjust it to get a little bit bigger if we need to. So we have our digital manifold gauge set all hooked up, and just to give you a quick little tour here, we're reading 86.6 PSIG on the low side line, which we have our blue hose connected to our large line, and there's a port right over here on the side of the service valve, and then we have our temperature clamp for the vapor line right here. It says SLT suction line temperature, and we're reading 48.4 degrees. Our high side pressure is 86.6 PSIG, and it, we're attached to the system via this red hose right here attached to the liquid line and we have our liquid line temp clamp reading right here and it says we're reading 49.3 degrees. So this system is off it's equalized and you can see that our temperature outside is right around about 49 degrees as you can see on our suction line and liquid line temp sensors. So you know our saturated temperatures are a little higher they're 51.3 and 51.4 and that's because we have our indoor fan already running on cooling mode and that's putting a little bit of heat onto the refrigerant at the evaporator coil. We're going to now go ahead and turn this system on and we're going to monitor our saturated temperature on our high side. We need to get that around 90 to 105 degrees. As well, we're going to monitor our superheat and also our vapor saturated temperature. We got to make sure that our saturated temperature is above 32 degrees and we need to let the system run for about five minutes or so because the system has a thermostatic expansion valve but we also need to make sure that we don't draw all the heat out of the house before we get done checking the refrigerant charge. You got to remember that there's no load on the house right now because it's during the winter time. Now we're going to go ahead and turn the system on and monitor our high side saturated temperature. If it goes up above 105 degrees we're going to need to enlarge the opening on our bag and we need to do this fairly quickly, but we do need to let the system run for about five minutes. So we're going to be monitoring our saturated temperature on the high side. And we also need to make sure that our saturated temperature on the low side, 
doesn't dip down below 32 degrees because at that point the evaporator coil is going to end up freezing. So you see it's 70 degrees on the inside of the building so we'll turn our AC unit on. Okay, so you see that our saturated temperature on the high side is above 105 degrees right here. Our vapor saturated temp is very close to 32 degrees. Also, our superheat is very low. So first thing we need to do, we need to monitor this to make sure it doesn't go down to close to zero or 0.5 or anything that would be dangerous to the compressor. Uh, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and enlarge the hole in the bag in order to drop the saturated temperature down a little bit. We can see it's falling right now, so that's that's good, but we're going to continue to monitor that, and we should see this superheat continue to rise. That superheat should be, you know, somewhere between 8 and 12 degrees or so, uh, red right here, but we got to wait, give it a little bit of time. It's only been a couple minutes so far. You see that our saturated temperature is getting low very quickly, though. I'm going to go ahead and open up this bag just a little bit more. Our saturated temperature is falling. You see over here our vapor sat temp is now getting below 32 degrees. So that evaporator coil is starting to freeze. So we gotta check this very quickly now. You see that our subcooling is actually very high. Over on the rating plate, it says that the subcooling, the target subcooling, is 12 degrees. So if we're reading 23 degrees of subcooling, you can tell that we are overcharged presently. You can also tell, once again, we don't have that much heat inside the building to absorb our heat from. If our temperature in the building was, say, 74 or something like that, we would have no problem keeping this up higher. As well, the airflow on this system on the inside of the building is good, uh, but once again, our temperature is, is dropping down here. Our superheat is rising into a normal uh, normal amount right here. You see our subcooling reading is, is no longer really changing and our liquid saturated temperature is right where we want it at 90 to 105 degrees. So we can tell that our subcooling uh, is, is too high right now. And subcooling is taken with our 90 degree saturated temperature minus 66 degrees liquid line temperature and that's how we get our subcooling of we we're going back and forth between 22 and a half and 24 degrees of subcooling. Once again we should be getting a little bit of frost right now on the evaporator coil. You really don't have a whole lot of time especially if you started checking the refrigerant charge at only like 68 degrees on the inside of the building. It's just not enough heat to absorb. You really you almost have to have an auxiliary heat source in the building or something in order to bring the temperature up above 70 degrees, preferably up, up to 72, 74 degrees inside the building before even checking the charge this way with a charging jacket. So as you can see, this subcoiling reading is not changing. We are overcharged, which means that we have to take refrigerant out of this system. We need to recover it, and we do that with a recovery bottle attached onto this yellow service line and then we are basically decharging the system with our 
uh, handle right here and our handle right here. We end up purging the air out of the hose right up to this part right here. Got to make sure that you have your, your safety gloves on, but basically you're purging the air. Purging the air right here on this hose and then attaching this to the recovery bottle. And then you're, you're decharging a little bit at a time or with this handle, a little bit at a time. You can leave this open and then just do it with this since this is a uh, four port digital manifold gauge set. But you're just using the system's compressor to help push the refrigerant into the recovery bottle. So if you were trying to determine what the superheat was, you have a suction line temperature right here of 41.7 minus 28.3 degrees, which once again is below freezing, so the evaporator cool has frost on it and is in the process of freezing presently. We have a superheat of 12, 12 degrees. So that's how you check the refrigerant charge with a digital manifold gauge set and a charging jacket. You gotta do it real quick and make any adjustments that you have to make very quickly. Uh, but as you can see, our sub -point reading has not changed. But I just wanted to show you how to do this. If you're looking for the charging jacket using the video or the digital manifold gauge set, I have them both linked down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. If you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.